As I begin uh, tonight, I want to share a story. They say uh, a picture shares a thousand words, and my dad is a pastor. So as a kid, we were in church every Sunday, vacation Bible school. And so this picture always makes me laugh because, for one, I'm wearing the biggest belt. I believe it was my dad's belt. And I don't think those pants are mine. (laughs) But it also shows a great transition from the 80s to the 90s, right? (laughs) But growing up in this environment, I learned a lot of stories. And I want to share a story with you uh, from the Bible that really has a lot of meaning in my life now. And the story is about 12 leaders going to inspect the land before they take possession of it. And Moses sent 12 of his best leaders. And when they returned, they were very positive about what they discovered, a land flowing with milk and honey, and it was large, full of grapes. However, the challenge for them, they said, we saw giants in the land, and next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what we thought too. And because of this fear, 10 of the spies said, you know, I don't think we should go into the land. We should go back to where we came from. And two of them said, we can overcome them. And this story has a lot of meaning to me because for a lot of my life, how I saw myself, I saw myself small. And this story means so much because I saw myself small because as a teenager, I struggled. I had cystic acne. I felt very self-conscious. Being short, I felt it put me at a disadvantage in relationships because all the girls wanted tall guys. Can I get a witness? (laughs) And because I had low self-esteem, I really didn't believe people when they gave me compliments. And those were my giants. You see, giants are sometimes symptoms from early childhood experiences that, we have now t- that have now taken hold of our life. And if we want to change the story of our life, it begins with the way that we see ourselves in our story. You see, we have both negative and positive experiences in early life. As, ba- as babies, we have experiences that begin to shape how we see ourselves that can eventually show up in adulthood which creates this program. It creates this script that when life happens, we respond in a certain way. And these experiences create a script, how we read it, how we read it from daily life. It creates a fear script or a love script. A script meaning the thoughts, the emotions, and the behaviors that make up how I see myself, others, in my future. So as we begin this journey, the question you're challenged to ask yourself is how do I see myself? You see, when we have life experiences like adoption, physical and emotional abuse, it creates a fear script. And when we have life experiences in early childhood that are positive, we have positive role models and parents that show up for us consistently, we have great caregivers, it creates a love script. You see, a fear script has insecurity with self and a love script has security with self. And a deeper understanding to these scripts is attachment style. You see, attachment style says how I connect with myself and connect with others. And my primary caregivers influence this attachment style. And so I have another story I want to share with you. You see, my script came from being adopted. And so my biological mother, she did crack cocaine while carrying me and she could no longer care for me. She was schizophrenic. And so I was adopted. After nine days, I was put in foster care and officially adopted at two years old. But that early on experience impacted the way that I related and connected with people. You see, my script said I was not good enough. My script said that I was rejected. My script said that I had an anxious and fearful avoidant attachment. You see, I remember oftentimes as a child not handling well when my mom would leave me behind at home. I did not like it at all. She had to trick me to leave home. She had to tell one of my siblings, I need you to take my purse and go to the side door because I'm about to leave Joshua at home. (laughs) And there I had a radar for which I saw when she was going to grab her purse. I saw she was getting ready to leave somewhere. I'm like, where are you going, mom? And so... 
Oftentimes, I found myself, when she started to leave me at home, I would be crying at the window. Has anyone looked in the mirror and saw how you cried ugly? Any ugly criers? And so, these moments, though, I would be screaming and crying, looking out the window, Mom, don't leave me. You see, that feeling of abandonment, it's like an inner tear to the soul, a helplessness. It's an intense anxiety, like your soul can't breathe. It's a destabilizing experience. And so as I grew up, though, I was aware that I had this fear of losing people when I met them. I struggled with relationships ending or that they didn't work out. And sometimes I even overthought, did I say that right? Did I do this right? Asking myself, what is wrong with me? Why does this keep happening? And as I would later learn that, it was my attachment style of anxious and fearful avoiding. You say, well, what do those attachment styles look like? You see, we all want to have the positive, secure attachment style because it says I'm secure in relationships and I'm secure with other people. I'm safe with myself and I'm safe with you. But the anxious attachment style says I have a negative view of myself and a positive view of others. So I'm really unsure if you're going to stay. And you have a strong fear of abandonment. You have a strong fear. Are people going to leave me when I meet them? And then there's the fearful avoidant. See, that one, you have a low view of self and a high view of others. You want closeness, but yet you want to be distant. You see, the goal is that with attachment, is that to overcome it, you have to do the opposite of what that fear is telling you to do. And the key part is that you have to love yourself, be vulnerable, and choose connection. Meaning that when I choose connection, I'm going to slide up in that DM. I'm going to stop that person at the gym and say hi. I'm going to go for that job opportunity. I'm going to move out of the state of South Dakota and try something different. And if I want to change how I see myself, both inside and outside, the question to answer is, who do I want to become? And once I decide that, Then I say decisions lead to destinations. This script that we live from can influence every aspect of our life. In reality, it is understanding how am I leading and connecting with myself. Because the relationship that can be neglected the most is the one with ourself. And our external relationships often sometimes reflect our internal one. And when I'm ready to become, then I need to be aware what new information Do I need to input to challenge my life patterns? Because my life patterns consisting of emotions, thoughts, and behaviors, patterns, and programming are all in our subconscious mind. You see, when we are dangerous, when we are not conscious of our responsibility for how we behave, think, and feel. And to become aware means that we need to step into a place of insight, and empathy. To move into this higher consciousness, the challenge is to be intentional, to learn more about yourself, to be curious, to inspect yourself. Ask yourself, how come every time this happens, I do this? How come every time this happens, I respond this way? And when we learn about our own emotions, how they feel, and how we experience them, we have developed insight. You see, insight says, I can see what's underneath. Sight says, I can see what's far, but it's insight that helps me move into a place of empathy. And so learning to live and lead my life from a script of fear to love is knowing that it's me versus me. It's a process of unbecoming to become. I have the awesome privilege each week to work with individuals, couples, families as a therapist, and I, get the awesome, I have the awesome privilege to help them to change the script in their mind. Because it's in our subconscious mind, as research has shown, that it's our long-term memory, our emotions, feelings, habits, and patterns, and belief systems. And that's the hard part, changing our belief systems. Because our scripting comes from our relational world created by our primary caregivers when we were children. You see, relationships can be mirrors. Relationships can be mirrors that reveal what's in us. External relationships can reflect our internal one with ourselves, which is why it's me versus me. 
The script we live from is like a compass in how we choose partners, how we choose jobs, how we choose opportunities. It's the reflection that we're challenged to change. So here, if I look at my life, if I look at the inside of my life as a garden, I have to ask myself the question, is it blooming or is it wilting? If I look at my life like a garden, I have my tree, I have my my spouse's tree, and in the middle is our marriage tree. I have my kids sprinkled in there running around. I have to ask myself, is that tree, our marriage tree, is it blooming or wilting? Because it's all dependent on how I'm living my life from a love script or a fear script. So to change the script of your life, here's a simple strategy. With learning to love yourself. How am I loving myself? Am I pouring into myself or am I pouring more into others and I find myself with nothing left at the end of the week? You see, the key part to this strategy, like never before, is to dig deeper, believe bigger, and live stronger to see yourself become your best self. And a key tool is self-reflection. Self-reflection is a powerful tool because it helps us to grow in self-awareness. How many of you pause each day, each moment, each week to self-reflect, to say, how am I doing? Did I reach my goals? How did I love this person? Did I live in fear? What is my challenges? Because self-reflection helps you to see what you can't see. Self-reflection helps you to know what you don't know that you don't know. And ways you can do this are therapy, journaling, with a mentor, and meditation. But here are four tools to help you to garden your life well. Number one is assess. Ask yourself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? How have I been behaving? Have I been behaving badly? Or have I been behaving good? Be honest. Because this is the self-monitoring part. Then I need to accept that my current reality doesn't have to be my forever reality. My current reality doesn't have to be my forever reality. I just know where I'm at. And with the new information that I gain, I adapt, I evolve, I grow, I go forward, which moves me into the place of advancing, which means I'm choosing to be intentional and consistent, and I have a strategy of accountability with partners, mentors, and coaches. You see, using these tools to change your story can help you move from a fear script to a love script. So let me tell you about another couple that I saw twice a month. Their names are changed and the details changed for confidentiality. But this couple would come to me twice a month and they were gridlocked, they were stuck. They couldn't get past the tension and the the conflict and communication. And they would come week after week and there would be blow-ups and they would yell at each other and have to leave out of the room. And after our last session, I asked them about the fear, the fear that they're experiencing. And they said, after a month of not seeing them, they said, when we drove home, we talked about that fear because we had a fear that if we divorce because we're different, that you're going to take the kids away from me. Are you going to treat me this way? And they said, once we talked about the fear that we were experiencing, we were able to move back into a place of loving each other. See, the powerful thing about attachments is that it's rooted in fear. So let me tell you another story that I got to witness growing up. I remember the day that my parents called all six of my siblings There's six of us. Can you imagine that life? Five teenagers going through puberty. (laughs) And they called us downstairs, and they told us that they were getting a divorce. I was in the fourth grade. You see, the thing about my parents is they would sing duets everywhere, churches, funerals, weddings, and they toted us all around the small town, South Dakota, They met married when they are 18 and 19. And let me tell you, there's stories I can't tell you right now because I don't want to get in trouble. (laughs) But thank God they made it to when they did. But our entire world changed because 
In that moment, we knew that traditions would change, holidays would change, our life would change. One of our traditions, we went to the Royal Fork Buffet every Sunday. Rest in, pre- rest in peace, Royal Fork. <laughs> but I saw them work through many challenges and, and some time went on and they went their separate ways, but they, they decided to work on themselves after their divorce. And two years later, my dad started coming back around. And what they made a decision to do was to remarry. You see, they worked, in their, they worked through their fear script to get to their love script. And in their loving script, in the last 20 years, I've seen them battle colon cancer, breast cancer, kidney cancer, bearing parents, bearing siblings, bearing their oldest son, while living and fighting to stay in a love script. Where work, one couple found that divorce moved them into a love script, and another found that reconciliation and marriage moved them into a love script. You see, each story is different. But life will always have its giants, but it depends on how you see yourself when you face them. And with the love script, it's full of abundance, confidence, courage, self-love, acceptance, and healthy boundaries. You see, when I begin to love myself fully, accepting myself fully, that's when I can move into a love script. That is when I begin to change the script of my life because perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. It's a punishment of disconnection. It's a punishment of being alone. It's a punishment of not being lovable. It's a punishment of nobody cares about me. But when I choose to care about myself more than anybody else, then I can begin to love, live out of a love script. And see, my story is the strong word of my script of fear was rejected. It created an anxious style. And when I was 35, my mentor pulled me aside and she said, do you know that you walk around your whole life like you're rejected? When in fact you are chosen because your parents picked you. Out of all the kids, they chose you. And that shifted my world. You see, fear is the greatest time robber, hope crusher, and dream killer. But love is the opposite. It'll help you make up for lost time. It'll strengthen hope. It'll breathe new life into your dreams. You see, life-shaping moments can strengthen our fear script, our love script, depending on how I see myself in the moment. And so, my challenge to you tonight is change your script, write a new story, and slay your giants. Thank you.